Hello and uh, welcome to another vlog. I'm outside the uh, Shakespeare North Playhouse, Prescott Theatre. I'm here not to, to go and see a show, I'm not seeing a show tonight. Um, my, myself and my uh, good camera woman, Tonto, <laughs> we're going to see a, a spoken word event, uh, spoken word event, um, which is kind of like stand up poetry readings, I suppose. I haven't been to one of these before, so I'm going to find out. Um, not so long ago, um, I, um, I, saw, I saw an advert for the Shakespeare North on their Facebook page. It was a video and um, it was spoken by a woman who, um, with a thick, what I thought was a thick Scouse accent. So, um, basically, I made a comment about, um, about this video and I'll tell you what I said. I've, I've made a, a note of it here just so I, I get it completely correct. I said, um, it was an innocuous kind of thing. I said, I have a pet hate about anybody describing anything from Prescott with a Liverpool accent. Prescotians have a unique culture of their own. Um, <laughs> which I thought was an inno innocent thing to say. And, um, you know, it's a, a, a theatre that's based in Prescott. This is Prescott, after all. And um, they, were live, live, lose a, live, <laughs> they were using a Scouse scouser to describe that which was great and uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not bothered about that really it's, a, it's about the I was trying to defend the culture of Prescott and um, its uniqueness anyway uh, somebody basically they jumped down my throat and they called me a racist <laughs> and um, they they threatened to tell everybody that I was a racist and that I was this, that and the other and called me all kinds of names. And also um, that everybody who follows Born and Raid, Raised in Prescott are basically members of a cult. And I should be chucked out of the town and I should be chucked off the website. They've gone crazy with this comment. So it gave me an idea um, to basically explain what I was trying to say. And, uh, and um, when I was growing up in Prescott, um, everybody in Prescott talked with a Lancashire accent, um, quite heavy Lancashire accent. Um, it was distinct from the Liverpool accent. And um, it was uh, something I, I grew up with myself. I've got a slight uh, Liverpool accent to my speech now because I spent 40 years of my life living and working in Liverpool but um, when I was growing up you never heard a Scouse accent and I was just making that point that um, the, the culture of Prescott had changed and it would be nice to hear a Prescott accent now to be fair on the theatre they've used many different accents in their videos uh, and such and such but uh, you know, to make that comment and then be, for somebody to think it's a racist thing to say, well, that wasn't the point. So I thought I'd make a video that actually explains what I was trying to say. Um, the history of all this is basically that 200 years ago, there was no such thing as a Scouse accent. Um, it was in 1830, the people in Liverpool spoke just like the people in Prescott and just like the people in St. Helens and Wigan and Billinge and everywhere like that. The mass migration of workers during the Industrial Revolution, well, that changed all that. Um, also, the potato famine in the 1840s in Ireland, there was a mass migration of Irish to the ports like Liverpool and we had the Welsh come in for work as well. So it was a movement. It's a general movement and it changed, it changed things. And so um, Scouse, the so-called Scouse, is very much a mixture of Irish, Lancashire and Welsh. It's an accent that is less than 200 years old. And it is an accent, by the way. Prescotians, the Prescotian 
accent, but not only the accent, the dialogue can be traced back to the 4th century BC with the fall of the Roman Empire. Amazing, isn't it? Because when the Roman Empire fell in the 4th century BC, we had the Angles and the Saxons and then followed closely followed by the, the Danes, the, the uh, Vikings. And they all settled in the north coast here and Yorkshire. That's why the Yorkshire and Lancashire accents are very similar. And these mixture of accents um, actually created not an accent as such, but a dialect and a way of speaking. And that way of speaking, I've made a little video to for you to understand exactly what that was. And if you thought Shakespeare was difficult to understand, <laughs> Uh, let's see if you can understand this. That ain't been long, Fessler. How you doing? Well, I'd be all right with our own Clemming and Jiggert. <laughs> Clemming? I never had no mate. Oh, my flaky neck, Jack, you for geek bagging. For geek bagging? The man be cod, then. Missy done it scratch last night. He was tattled too. I could have given him a belty chops. What the threaten, Jack? Well, I was ill off about it, that horse. <laughs> what, what a filler, Lou. He's been humming and mailing about it all rolled down here. It's not getting no, nice cheers at home. <laughs> no, but he left bagging at home. What come over there, Jack? Just that your head works, that's all. What time did you pike off? Oh, just a few an hour, wigging town. Well, I'm fitting you're getting here. Did you find your road all right? Folks follow lies in the cell around here, then, I'll. That's not God in all the... <laughs> We've been driving out lawns half an hour. Did you get round Brum all right? Oh, ah, but it was after Brum when it started taking it up. Aye, and it didn't save, clod it down after that. It's not been wheat here. Bill, I broke them papers I wanted. Oh, aye, I haven't wait, mate, but we're over a than us. Oh, well, we'll sort it out. <laughs> Any road, come in and carry you down. I'll scratch some mate for you. OK, that was a conversation in the Lancashire dialect of a place not too far from here, on the other side of St Helens in Billinge. The language they were using in that video um, was from around 1850, about the start of the Industrial Revolution, uh, before the mass migration of people and, and accents started to change. It's the difference between dialect and accents. An accent, generally, you can understand, but you can't understand that. Because that is a, that is on the way to becoming a language in its in, in its own right. Everybody around here, around Prescott, um, St Helens, um, possibly Liverpool as well, spoke in a similar dialect to that two hundred years ago, uh, under two hundred years ago. In fact, you can see how um, over the years it with the, the standard the standardisation of um, the English system everybody needed to understand each other um, that these dialects died out I'm going to play you another piece now by uh, a person called J uh, John Collier he was born in um, uh, 1708 and he died in 1786 he was a caricaturist, a poet, a writer and um, he was known by the pseudonym of uh, Tim Bobbins um, and he, he wrote the very first Lancashire dialect book a hundred years before this in about 1747 um, he fancied himself as the Lancashire's version of Ogarth so I'm going to play you that now and see if you can make any sense out of that Eh, hey, lack a day, belike thou does na know that those hot and stale win lie and at tay may no borks a telling folk at tears his reap breed a bandy hewits and to clench it then show their whelps ere the owl petchwark jump. And how then? Nay, this is a cutter tooter, a war for bleffin' indeed. But is there no way coming meet with them? Splesh had rhyme on them a summit. Your host I couldn't have rhymed. Okay, um, how did you find that? Um, can you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> Well, I'm not going to go further back in history than that. I think you get the, the idea now. Um, uh, I'm going to play you 
a bit of footage from my uncle Peter just before he died. And um, it, he doesn't speak in dialect, but he speaks in accent. And it was Lancashire Prescotian accent that I grew up with. And I suppose many people in Prescott, if they're old enough to remember, will have grown up, up with this accent. Um, so um, to tell me uh, if you can see any um, um, resemblance to the... Uh, to the old dialect uh, possibly not but it's interesting to see uh, what was left of that dialect like 300 years later in the 1960s when i grew up and and see where it went to then okay let's have a look at that oh this guy needs to be shirt line that's the you know make them oh this guy what was that thing about that time you were coming down Borough Lane and didn't a plane crash or something? What happened? Remember when you were coming down Borough Lane and you saw all the no. the lights and that the planes it is, coming that in? That's where the ends come to the end. Ah, the that was it. Out, the mob walked out of the road. They distracted Borough when they were walking down through the land. Yeah, and did, did they fly over? No, they didn't. They were a boom, yeah. What are they called? Traceable. Traceable. They go by there. And the wire and wire. The wire. But to trace out the what's projectiles for the um for the, the anti aircraft and missiles. Aircraft. Oh I see, yeah. It's used on the aircraft yeah. anyway. It's 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 I don't know. And what did you think at the time? He didn't come there. Didn't bother you? I'm happy to. You weren't frightened? He was really having bombers coming over and over. So, and so I suppose there. it was just accepted as the norm, wasn't yes, it? Yes, accepted as the norm. It's like it was natural because it was used. happening, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, they used to. And the war was on, wasn't yeah, it? Yes, used to. But we moved them from West Bend to Bracket then. Then we'll go and we'll go we'll, 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 well, that's the two Japanese cars we need. Them pressure boys must be coming from Burnwood Airport. Mm -hmm. I seen one gentleman from a guest shop down with a Did you? I put the shell in there. And it crashed down into the bed? Yeah. Where was that piece of? Just to put the fire in there. Just to put the fire in there. Oh, I seen it from Wisdom when I was in Wisdom. Yeah. And it's pretty shell in and it just plummeted yeah. Was there any survivors now? Mm -hmm. don't know. Yeah. And then it just went to the Oh, don't know if any survivors are playing I don't know all that. That's that, that, that the world you're down. Was when the Germans used to come over first. Yeah. When they lived in Cumberland, a place in then there, they put the German bombers from the world. So people wouldn't be able to see them. You free them. I heard one bum going down. They opened up the lift and then the flat door. Five hundred pounds. And it landed in Dragon Lane. Big loud bum. In front of the farmhouse going down. So it didn't land on the farmhouse? No. It went down the side of the wall of the farmhouse. And it didn't next look. So what happened then? Did they have to come and move it? Army, army. They defused it. Mm. So it, it wouldn't the, cause any damage? Yeah, the turbo defused that type of bomb. So uh, then, you have to put a turbo defused that type of bomb. Well, do you know what they're doing though, don't we? Piece of the train to do so, yeah, that. If that bomb went up, it would have been dragging the air And everybody in it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it would have been in the first place, but then they could bring it I, 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 I'll, I'll go through the, the next one. We're still just standing there. The next day? We're still well done. 
Yeah, good old Uncle Peter. I hope you enjoyed uh, that, and if you'd got through it without a dictionary or um, some kind of translator, you've done well. You've done very well. Um, I'll just, uh, before I go, I'll just um, read you some of the things that we used to say in our house, and I'm sure other Prescotians. I put these up on Born and Raised in Prescott before, but this is some of the ways that we used to speak when we were growing up in Prescott in the 1950s and 60s. Twas on the other side, any road, up street. Bin up brew to make a few bob at Suggies. Going for a jangle, women in. Don't get naughty. He's been around and played bloody Hamlet with me. Put coal in toll. He's a woman. Get up the wooden lot, you lot. <laughs> so, as you can see, um, uh, Prescott has a rich tradition of accents. And I was trying to say, wouldn't it be great to preserve all that? If we're so intent on preserving the language of Shakespeare, which is Elizabethan after all said and done, and Shakespeare wrote in a, um, a Warwickshire accent, actually, he didn't, he didn't sound like Judy Dench and he didn't sound like Laurence Olivier. He didn't have an up-and-middle-class accent. He was a, a working boy from uh, Stratford, uh, son of a glove maker and a farmer. Um, so if, if people can respect that, then they can respect the Prescott accents and realise that, you know, I'm not being a racist by, <laughs> by saying that. Anyway, if you are a member of Born and Raised in Prescott, welcome to the cult. I'm glad you, you're on board. I hope you're still watching the videos. This particular video is uh, dedicated to Cherry Pie, who she knows who she is. <laughs> uh, if you've enjoyed it, then great. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another vlog.